Welcome to worship. Wherever you are, sitting on your couch, sitting in your bed, in your living room, in your kitchen, we welcome you. But before we start worship this morning, let's take a deep breath together to allow the spirit that connects us with one another to be. The spirit within us that allows us to see one another as human beings, we got less our flaws, imperfection, and the messy people we are. The spirit that gives life, the life when it's taken away from one, affects all of us. We are here to receive Christ. We are called to proclaim Christ. We are sent to show Christ. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, one God, the fountain of living water, the walk who gave us birth, our light, and our salvation. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God. For in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. To the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. To the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water, in your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Our opening hymn is on page six in your bulletin, All Who Hunger Gather Gladly.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. O God, our defender, storms rage around and within us and cause us to be afraid. Rescue your people from despair. Deliver your sons and daughters from fear and preserve us in the faith of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our summer music is Bind Us Together, Lord. It's a duet from John and Minerva Sowell. For our special music this morning, we would really like you to, as you sit at home, wherever you might be, join us. First of all, in the chorus, we will sing the first chorus and a verse. And if you can join us on the second through of the chorus. And then, ideally, if you can join us on the last verse. You'll see why when we get there. So here we go with our special music. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, bind us together. morning I hope everybody is doing well at home keeping sheltered in place and keeping safe uh, we continue with pr today's prayer requests again it's rather a long uh, list of people so let me begin by saying called into unity with one another and the whole creation let us pray for our shared world please pray for our star Renee Bob, Neil and Linda, Al, Michaela, Sadie, Sophia, Gabe, Ken, Virginia, Don, Art, Eileen, Ken, Jackie, Cecilia, Martha, Richard and Vicky, Tina and Marty, Ethel, Liam, Doris, Megan, Whitney, Myrtle, Maria, Paul, Karen, Don, Tyler, Doris, Eloise, Charles, Steve, Tom, Carol, 
Chris, Ellen, Jill, Dolly, and last but not least, Angel. We also need to pray for the COVID-19. Uh, we send out hope, comfort, help, and healing to all those whose lives have been affected by the disease, whether it is physically, emotionally, financially, spiritually, or in any other way. We remember especially those who are most vulnerable, especially the elderly, the medical care providers, and our siblings from the community of colour. We also pray for the medical personnel, the doctors, nurses, technicians, uh, people who do the cleaning and uh, sanitizing of all the different hospital wards, the first responders, the police, the firemen, the EMTs, the ambulance drivers, and also those in the military the men, women, and families of those who serve to protect and help us. We also want to pray for our society, that there may be an end to violence, suspicion, and hatred, and that God's peace may envelop us and help us to see each other through God's eyes of love. We also want to pray for our seminary graduate, Sarah Gorman, Congratulations and blessings on her receiving her first call to St. John's Lutheran Church in Marion, Wisconsin. Uh, in, in actual fact, she will be ordained in Fresno on August the 26th. We also pray for our benevolence this month, Fresno Rescue Mission. And finally, we pray for our church, here at Bethel Lutheran Church. We pray for our pastor, Pastor Mitch, the church council, the church staff members, the Sierra Pacific Synod, Bishop Mark Holmrood, and all the people here at Bethel. We ask all these various things in your son's precious name. Amen. Our first lesson this morning is taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 37, reading verses 1 through 4 and 12 through 28. Jacob settled in the land where his father had lived as an alien, the land of Canaan. This is the story of the family of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was shepherding the flock with his brothers. He was a helper to the sons of Bilhar and Zilpah, his father's wives, and Joseph brought a bad report to them, to their father. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any other of his children, because he was the son of, of his old age, and he had made him a long robe with sleeves. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Now his brothers were to pasture their father's flock near Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, Are not your brothers pasturing the flock at Shechem? Come, I will send you to them. He answered, here I am. So he said to him, Go now, see if it is well with your brothers and with the flock, and bring word back to me. So he sent him from the valley of Hebron. He came to Shechem, and a man found him wandering in the fields. The man asked him, What are you seeking? I am seeking my brothers, he said. Tell me, please, where they are pasturing the flock. The man said, They have gone away, for I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dothan. They saw him from a distance 
and before he came near to them, they conspired to kill him. They said to one another, here comes this dreamer. Come now, let us kill him and throw him into one of the pits. Then we shall say that a wild animal had devoured him and we shall see what will become of his dreams. But when Reuben heard it, he delivered him out of their hands, saying, Let us not take his life. Reuben said to them, Shed no blood, throw him into this pit here in the wilderness, but lay no hand on him, that he might rescue him out of their hand, and restore him to his father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the long robe with sleeves that he wore, and they took him and threw him into a pit. The pit was empty. There was no water in it. Then they sat down to eat. And looking up, they saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead with their camels carrying gum, balm and resin on their way to carry it down to Egypt. Then Judah said to his brothers, What profit is there if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay our hands on him, for he is our brother, our own flesh. And his brothers agreed. When some Midianite traders passed by, they drew Joseph up, lifting him out of the pit, and sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver. And they took Joseph to Egypt. Here ends our first lesson this morning. Our psalm today is Psalm 85. It will be reading responsively. I will listen to, the, to what the Lord God is saying. For you speak peace to your faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to you. Truly your salvation is very near to those who fear you, that your glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Faithfulness shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before the Lord, and shall prepare for God a pathway. Our second lesson this morning is taken from the book of Romans, chapter 10, reading verses 5 through 15. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, Do not say in your heart, Who will ascend into heaven? That is, to bring Christ down. Or, who will descend into the abyss? That is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is, the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if we confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart, and so is justified. And one confesses with the mouth, and so is saved. The scripture says, No one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? 
And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Here ends our second lesson today. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 14th chapter. Immediately, he made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat battered by the waves was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the lake. But when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately, Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and beginning to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Our sermon hymn is on page 10 in your bulletin, Break Now the Bread of Life.
Our gospel this morning picks up right where our gospel for last week left off. If you remember, Jesus had just learned of John the Baptist's death and went by himself to pray over this sad event. But his popularity was rising and the crowds were determined. They found him and despised, despite his emotional state, Jesus had compassion on the crowd. And not only cured the sick, but he provided a full meal from just a few portion of food of, for 5,000 plus human beings. The bellies were filled up and they even had leftover to take home with them. And then the day is over. And Jesus sends his disciples on as they undoubtedly wanted while he takes care of sending the crowd home. After the crowd was gone, he went off to pray in the solitude which he had originally been looking for. In the meantime, the disciples are following Jesus' directions to go on ahead of him by boat to the other side. And their time on the water is exactly the opposite of how the day went. It was hard. Adversity. The wind was not at their back. When it was, they could practically fly across the Sea of Galilee. That night, it was against them. So it was hard work. Every boat length and progress exhausting. And Jesus is off praying. We're easy when you need him. Like a couple weeks ago, when he was with the disciples in the boat on the sea when a storm came up, he helped them then. Work easy for them now. You know how it is. You've been there. I have been there too. So one time in the summer, my family and two other couples went to a small town south of Haiti near the ocean to spend some time with my high school friend. So we rented a canoe and put on a motor one of my friends bought and off we went to a small island across town. It was a beautiful day full of laughter, friendship, and plenty of good food and drink. On our way back, we were still talking and laughing. All of a sudden, I noticed a dead silence on the canoe. When I looked around and saw that the little boat that held 12 of us, four children and eight adults, was only about six inches above the water. We underestimated the time of the day because in this part of the country, after 5 p.m., the tide gets very high. As we were progressing to the shore, the tide got higher. The little boat seemed smaller and smaller, and the silence of the adults persisted while they were looking around them, looking as to find something even though they had no idea what it was. As human beings, we all have good and bad days in our lives. There are particular times in our lives when we feel that the boat we are in is far away from the shore and we cannot grasp what is going on around us. We are looking, but we cannot find anything. And if you are like me, you are terrified because not only are you not very confident in your swimming skill, but the only life jackets that are available on the boat are children's, and they have been wearing them. On the boat that evening, all of us as adults felt a sense of helplessness. 
After having such a great day with Jesus, the disciples did not feel the presence of Jesus when they were far away from the shore. They get terrified and wonder where Jesus is when they really need him. But you too, all of you have been there. Good days, good weeks that end far too soon. The good days when the church used to have in-person services, Sunday school, adult choir, adult formation, and coffee hours. And then COVID-19 takes us back to the grind, the back to adversity with the wind in our face, not at our back. Challenges of finding the right tools to worship online, struggles to communicate with your pastor because you want to see and talk with your pastor in person. Trials that keep coming and seem never to end. And by the way, your pastor want to talk with you too. Times when it seems like Jesus isn't there for you when you need him. And then Jesus showed up. And then Jesus showed up to his disciple in the middle of the sea. He saw them struggling. He saw the adversity. For the good shepherd never stops watching over his sheep. He never lets them get too far away. He doesn't just zap himself into the boat. That's not Jesus' way. But he does walk on water because that's where the disciples are. He comes to them where they are. Peter could not believe his eyes because they were so terrified. So he thought it was a ghost saying, Lord, if it is you, after Jesus told them to take heart, it is I. Lord, if it is you. Peter knows it is Jesus. He has been with Jesus and witnessed all Jesus is capable of doing. But the fear takes over and wants, and he wants reassurance of what he already knew. His faith. His faith in Jesus, his faith in the Messiah. Nonetheless, he asked, Lord, if it is you. Maybe us too. Jesus is here with us in the middle of this pandemic, he promised. But maybe like the disciples, it's just not in the way we want him to be. We need reassurance that worshiping online is a different way of being in communion with one another. That pastoral care can be done on Zoom or over the phone. That faith formation can be done using other forms of media. My friends, Jesus still doesn't zap himself into, into our lives or into the midst of our problems. He is with us here and now, though through the people he uses to care for us. Parents, spouse, friends, family, coworkers, neighbors, pastors, and more. These people are the faces of God through whom God has mercy on us, help us, gives, gives to us, and provides for us. Amen.
Let us profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, wherever you are, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, what in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So my brothers and sisters, the body of Christ given for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our closing hymn is on page 11 in your bulletin. Amen, we praise your name. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.